turn to open session. We just completed a executive session to discuss collective bargaining. And at this time, I will see if there's anybody here who would like to make public input on any issues on the agenda. Okay, next we'll move to the student report. We have Elizabeth Barrett from the class of 2020. Um, good evening, my name is Elizabeth Barrett. I'm a sophomore here at North Harding High School, and I'll be sharing with you the student report. So this past weekend has been very busy in terms of student activities. As many of you know, uh, the student council went to our um, yearly hyannis conference down the Cape. So this is kind of what we prepare for all year. And this year we had the honor of presenting a delegate or a candidate for the MASC presidency, which is, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Dan Madden, but he held that position two years ago. Well, we know How Dan. can we forget we Dan? Know Dan? Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so it's a huge deal because that basically means that you, ha you are the, um, kind of like the captain of all student councils within our entire state. So not just our region, but like the whole, the state as a whole. Um, so at the conference this year, there was uh, 1,173 students in attendance. That's uh, really high um, than what they usually have. And uh, we started the conference off with doing our annual polar plunge. That's a Special Olympics held event. So basically uh, all the different schools kind of dress up in costumes. Our costume was uh, Dunkin' Donuts because for um, Duncan McNeil, the person who was running for the presidency, um, his name and his slogan was Dunkin' Donuts, Stuka runs on you. So we kind of like played off that theme and did like we're Dunkin' Donuts in the water. Um, so we were like pink and <laughs> orange and like had like little uh, donut inflatables and stuff. And so our school individually raised $300 to donate to this um, cause. We did that through like, uh, I don't know if the teachers had Jeans Day a couple weeks ago, like when the Patriots were playing. And then we had a lot of personal donations and a lot of the student council members went to their parents and got like corporate donations. So that was really good. Um, so basically a lot of people don't know like Hyannis, the whole running is not just like, oh, it's not just a speech session. There's like you, all the students on your council have to campaign for you. So we're allotted two hours, basically, where we dress up in pink and orange and wear like Duncan made his aprons that had like uh, his slogan and like a donut on them. And we go around to other schools, like sharing his basic ideas and saying like why he'd make the best candidate um, for the presidency. And he did make it to the runoff. So the first, uh, second night of the conference, we did know that he was um, between two people for the position. But unfortunately, he did not win. He lost the, a girl from Tantasqua. Her, her name was Tave and her like, um, theme was superhero, so it was Tave the day. Uh, she, <laughs> she did win, um, but it was still a great experience, and all the students loved campaigning, and um, it ended up being a success because he did get enough votes to be our NEMASC delegate. So <coughs> NEMASC is the Northeast Massachusetts Association of Student Councils, so that's like just our region of student councils, so he will be representing our region on the state board. Um, also, we had some other nominations for awards. So junior Francis Walsh was nominated for the James Rokas Award, and Justin Heinz, also a junior, was nominated for the Ung Sung Hero Award. They did not receive those awards, but um, it was still a big, uh, reward, uh, a big accomplishment to be recommended from our council for those awards, because you have to have a certain amount of like um, work with the council to be nominated. And our current student council vice president, uh, student council president, so the president of our council individually, will be running um, for the position of NEMASC president this upcoming April. So she's running for the regional position, which is what um, Duncan held last year as a vice president, but she's running as uh, the president candidate. And also at our Hyannis conference, Mr. Bernard was awarded um, administrator of the year. So this is a really big deal because the 76 other schools that compete <coughs> for this title and uh, it's an amazing, amazing accomplishment, and it's very competitive because we've nominated him seven times before, and obviously Mr. Bernard has always done great work, and this is his first time receiving the award. And his speech was fantastic. All the students loved it. Like, you could hear a pin drop in the ballroom, which, like, 1,100 students, like, that's, like, hard to, hard to do. Um, and one of the quotes that you said in your speech that a lot of people uh, really stuck with them was the one from the movie Miracle, and so, it, he said, great moments are born for great opportunities. And then you proceeded on saying that uh, you are here tonight not by chance, but because you've earned the respect of others who care a lot about you, and you're among a select few representing your high school. And I kind of thought this really sums up like what student council is. And um, it really shows that like, you always put the students first. And like even before you were superintendent, you always like had the best intentions for our council. And like you allow us to kind of like 
take risks and run new events. So we really appreciate that. You know we're going to have to give him a raise now, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I don't know. You're too young to remember this, but some of you probably remember the uh, soap opera actress Susan Lucci, who was nominated like 20 <laughs> times before she won. I'm just glad you didn't get that far down the <laughs> line, too. Mr. Bernard. Oh, Callie Happer on Two and a Half Men was nominated seven times for the Jingle Writers Award. <laughs> Okay, joke, joking aside, I listened to the speech, someone had posted it, um, and I thought it was very heartfelt and special, and, you know, you know, as a North Reading citizen, I think we're very fortunate to have you here representing you. us in our school district. It was quite an honor. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Despite the wise guy comment. Oh, that's great. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. So all the students absolutely loved the conference, and everyone says they miss it so much, and they always want to go back. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. Duncan actually left his suitcase there. So oh, yesterday really? we had to drive two hours there and two hours back to pick that up. So we got to look at the ballroom again. Did anybody again find out if Duncan was getting a kickback from Duncan? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no? No. All right. I was just going to say, if anyone is 18, they should run for school committee. Yeah. <laughs> um, some other academic events are Student Council, also an event that I started with our council. We call it Teen Tech Tutors. And um, I think I brought this up in my last uh, report. Basically, we actually like we implemented it, and we've run it three times. Now we're doing it at the end of March. We do it at the end of every month. And we have a bunch of student council members and then other students in the school who are looking for community service hours go to the local senior center, like near the common. And we like go over how to the basic functions of like an iPhone and a smartphone. And we like do a little PowerPoint presentation, like have like a questions list and stuff. And they really appreciate that because um, a lot of them don't know how to use their phones. And uh, talk to text is really popular mm -hmm. when we do those. Like, be able to say into the phone, have to type stop it. <laughs> I, I think this is a great idea. There's one thing I recommend, though. Like, like, if my mother went to that, and then you told her these things, and then she's going to call me at 1030 at night, and you guys should give them your phone numbers, oh, yeah, too, yeah, for, the, yeah. for the calls for uh, we <laughs> tech do, um, support. Probably, yeah, tech <laughs> exactly. We bring little, like, uh, stickers, like white stickers, and we put on the back of their phone, they have their phone number, and they have our, the person who has Oh, them cool, you do number. that. Do you have any stickers oh. left? Yeah, <laughs> you know, you should be going to those uh, <laughs> sessions. Oh, that's nice. yeah. That's excellent. Phone? Do you have a flip phone? Or? Yeah, Jerry yeah, does. Phone. Jerry's got a flip phone. <laughs> um, and then for other information, uh, course selections are uh, going on right now. Um, I've, people I've talked to, I know like just in my house, it's much easier and we like to have the online format, mm -hmm. using how to like chase down your teachers during power block and kind of get those signatures that way. Uh, the juniors were due on February 16th. Uh, my class, the sophomores, was March 8th. The freshmen are up March 23rd. And then this past Saturday, a lot of students also took the SAT exams. And our Science Olympiad team will be competing at the Science Olympiad at Framingham State this upcoming Saturday. Um, also, this happened this weekend was the NRHS Maskers attended a regional competition for their play, One Man, Two Governors. And um, it did fantastic. They'll be advancing onto the next round of Drama Fest, which is the state finals in Boston. They're, they're advancing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, some of the awards that students received, Owen DeClean and Sam Ginto were both um, uh, recognized as a best, best Featured Actor, and Christina Lazen received uh, Best Supporting Actress, just to name a few awards. And um, for Athletic Matters, junior Megan Lawler competed at New England's um, this weekend for indoor track, and she placed fifth. The North Reading High School cheer competed yesterday at the Massachusetts State Cheerleading Competition at Whitman H and Hanson High School. They placed fifth in Division Four, but will fortunately not be moving on to the um, state competition. Uh, the boys basketball finished their season eight and two, and uh, the hockey team did really well this year, finishing finishing their season ten nine and three. Um, and all spring sports will begin March nineteenth. Um, for other events, uh, as many of you know, uh, there's the student representatives along with the class officers, so like the your junior class president, your senior class president, all of those class officers, and then your student reps to the school committee, which include myself and um, the five other students. And we were we got together with administration and basically organized some sort of event for the March 14th um, a situation where we want to acknowledge the students that were victims in the events in Parkland, but we also did not want to like 
disrupt the school day in a significant matter. So what we came to the compromise where we have uh, students gather, if they want to, gather on Main Street on the 14th for 17 minutes to acknowledge the 17 victims. We're not, um, ever, we're not like promoting that they actually step outside of the building, but just step outside into the hallway, like Main Street down there. And then um, I think it was handled in the best way we possibly could have. We had a lot of meetings about this, and uh, there was a lot of uh, heated debates in here among the students particularly, but um, it's, you can't, you have to come to a compromise. You can't kind of, if you put in a situation where like you favor the students or you favor the administration, it puts them as if we're like against each other. And I think like, when it, situations like these happen, you have to make sure that you unify both the administration and the student body. So we show that like we're in it together. People feel like more secure in the school building when like everything is kind of like come to a consensus. Um, yeah. So for my student report, I have an essay on the book The Kite Runner that I did in English class, and I just had the rubric. And then. Um, we make uh, edits online through Google Docs, so my teacher can go in and make comments. So like, I just have hers highlighted in pink, um, like the edits that you made in the essay. So I can just pass that around. Great job. Excellent. Thank you. Elizabeth, and uh, I wish I was mature, as mature as you are when I was a sophomore <laughs> in high school. Um, but we, I wish I was that mature now. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we talked about the uh, March 14th walkout, quote walkout, at our last meeting. And um, why do I forget, is it Caitlin Galvin? Yes. It was, yeah. yes. Caitlin um, basically passed along kind of the same message mm -hmm. that you talked about tonight, which was work with the administration, work within the student body, the student leaders would then meet with the administration and come up with, with something that hopefully would meet everybody mm -hmm. to everybody's satisfaction. I'm sure there are some students that are unhappy, um, but I, I'm glad to see it worked out this way. And I think it's excellent because it gives everybody an idea of Kind of what life is like a life's a negotiation so exactly. um i think it's a great life lesson I, yeah to sit down and like you said have a lot of people arguing back and right. back and forth and try to see if you can come to a consensus you're going to be dealing with that going forward i'm sure a lot of you are because you're going to be involved with committees like this where you know you have to be able to compromise you have to be able to change people's opinions and mm -hmm. I, I i've talked to a couple of the seniors and um and this is really a, a good good exercise for everybody and yeah. I'm glad that I, not everyone's going to agree and I know that mm -hmm. you're concerned that maybe some students aren't going to participate but I think it's you've done a good job with it. Um, thank you. Go ahead. Do yeah. you happen to know how the middle school is handling? Are they? Oh, there's no. Are, are they intermittent? Not, yeah. There will be no activity. The middle school yeah. will not be <coughs> participating. Okay. It's just going to be the high school. Correct. Yeah. Correct. The only, Scott? The only other point I would say is that the M MASC, the Mass Associative mm -hmm. School Committee, sent out a legal opinion letter. Which, oh, I saw that. Yeah. When you look through it, it's pretty much exactly how it was handled here as well. Just to say that you know, talk to everybody and mm -hmm. get you know involvement from everybody and buy-in from everybody. So, I feel like I feel like even without legal counsel from MASC, well, so that that was received yeah. after <coughs> yeah, determination, yeah. final determination yeah. was made. So when I read that, it was nice but to. But I, I think also it's good that. Students get to express themselves. Oh, they yeah. were. Like you guys. And there was a, sure a survey sent out today that, like, basically said, like, if you want to do it, if you don't, and then, like, another option where you could, like, give your own input. I think that helped because I know, a lot, like, a lot of students questioned why that was needed, but it makes sense because, like, the teachers need to have, like, a relative idea of how many students will be leaving and, like, who needs to be a main where street they and are. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Correct. I, I just wanted to follow up also on the uh, maskers performance of. A, gen a gentleman and two governors. It was outstanding. It was so funny. Uh, I mean, I sat next to Jerry, which was a mistake because my wife kept yelling at us for talking. Um, and, but it was hysterical. It really was. I, I'm hysterical. a huge Three Stooges fan, and it was like watching the Three Stooges. I mean, it was really that funny and that coordinated, and the set was unbelievable. I mean, they had a single set, then they opened it up and completely changed the entire set for the rest of the. Uh, for the rest of the play. It, it was really good. And this is the second time in three years that Maskers has been to the finals and the third time in the ten years that they've participated in uh, the, the uh, competition. Yeah, and the great thing is we get to host. Right. I mean, we get mm -hmm. to host the, you know, there were yeah. five. We couldn't five host when my daughter was involved. That was no. at the old high school. That was not. <laughs> no, no, I don't think we could. And they did a great opening. Oh, the, the opening, the introduction. The film. Mm -hmm. uh, right. That was terrific, oh, yeah. wasn't it? No, yeah, the video. They did, yeah. they did a film that was just hilarious. I mean, you know, and North Reading uh, students were right. involved in the introduction to the to the competitions. Do we have the date for the It's the 22nd through the 24th. Yeah. It's, it's the 23rd. Yeah. 23rd. Yeah. 
8 p.m. So that would be the Friday. I think it's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I think. We're Friday at 8. Yeah. The 23rd. Where yeah, is that, John? Do you know? It's in Boston, Jerry. Boston. It's a fun theater. Is it yeah, the... It's, um, it's that same one. Is it the Hancock Theater? I'm trying to think. That sounds right, yeah. It's a really neat theater. Um, I asked Mrs. Kane to send me the details. I think the 22nd, today. the 24th? Yeah. But we perform on the 23rd. 23rd. At 8 p.m. Yeah. Friday okay. day. When we used to go there, when we went there after making the finals and at the old high school, it was like we went to that theater and we're like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. And last time I went, I was like, hey, this is kind of just like our theater. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a big difference in the mentality that big, you great show. approach yeah. it with. It was, but it was funny. Yeah. It was really, and also congratulations to the cheerleaders. Uh, they yeah, continue to the excel <clears throat> and they do extremely well, fifth, fifth, fifth in the yeah. state. That's pretty good. Yeah. And I'll say, Mr. Chairman, the student reports get better they and do. better and better. Congratulations. I, Mr. Buckley made a good point. If any he of did? you are, well, really? if Wait. any of you are 18, but you're probably going to college, you should run for school committee. <laughs> hey, everybody wants to run for positions. <laughs> people. Exactly. We always need interest people. No. Anything else? Laurie? No, go ahead. No, just go ahead. <laughs> you want this? Yeah, you, you should have that so they can hear you. Thank you. As a parent of a sophomore, I just want to congratulate John Bernard for his foresight for the March 14th. It was amazing. John, you so recognized the student concerns, the parent concerns, teachers' concerns, and I think it's just absolutely wonderful that you put it all together in a very good way. So it's awesome. I'm not sure if my 10th grade is going to participate, doesn't matter. The point is, John, you handled it so well, recognizing everybody's needs, you especially, know what, especially the students. There that aren't happy. There will be. <laughs> yes, right? but be you know how I measure the success? There hasn't been, there wasn't a firestorm on Facebook. So I said, we did it. <laughs> it's a success. No, it, you know, I, it wasn't on Facebook. Right. It was... On John. No, but I'm saying there was no, like, there wasn't a backlash. big no. backlash. On exactly. But I just want to compliment our superintendent exactly. on the way he Thank handled you. it. It was perfect. It was beautiful. And the students appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. I appreciate John. you saying that. If I could, just, I, I don't want to belabor the point, but it, and I appreciate you saying that, Laurie, but I have to tell you, um, sitting in the meetings with the students and the high school administration, Mr. LaPrette and Mr. Downs and I, I think I missed one of the meetings, Lizzie. You met, well, you, some of the students met on their own. Yeah met with the administration I think three or four times and I know I missed um, the Wednesday meeting. Um, but I have to tell you, sitting in the room with 24 or so students and hearing the, um, the level of both intellect and maturity around um, why they felt that the need to express themselves and not losing the focus on what the day would be about was very, um, it was very heartwarming, I have to tell you. So I, I appreciate what you said, but I, really, I have to tell you that we would not have been nearly as successful as I think we are with, with what the outcome is um, if the students didn't demonstrate um, you know, a, 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 level, a level of cooperation and reasonableness. And I think you know, we were, I'd like to think that we received that well and we also presented that you know, same front with them. We wanted to try to work with them to come up with something. So it really, it really was a lot of people involved in making the decision, and the high school administration was, was pretty deeply involved, too. So, but thank you, but the kids really did a great job, too. So, Well, hopefully everything will go well the 14th. Yeah. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. And since you don't have school tomorrow, I'm assuming you want to stay the whole meeting now? <laughs> oh, no, you don't have to. No, I'm only kidding. Okay. You can go. Thanks. Great Unless job. Unless you're being thank punished you. for something. Right. Thank you, Unless, yeah. Oh. <laughs> thank you, Lizzie. Okay. Next, we have um, the MSBA SSBC update. And, John, I know there's no formal update. But I just had a question. Yeah. In terms of the punch list, so we pretty much through all the major things on the yes. punch list? Yes, we are. Um, I'm trying to think of, there hasn't been anything formal. Um, I would say that we continue to work on some of the outstanding issues that we had, right. um, you know, water and such. Right, right. And I would say we had a very good meeting on uh, Friday around um, wastewater treatment and trying to make some adjustments with right, the there cooling good, towers. Good suggestions on, yeah, on how to We had a to very good that. meeting, yeah. And it's going to cost some money, but it's not nearly not, as much as I thought it was. That's my sense. Pretty I reasonable. Think, I think we have a lot of the infrastructure here to, 
right. to make some adjustments that might, you know, cost a little bit of money to right. kind of, you know, um, add some valves and something to control with the cooling tower yeah. release and such. But I, it was a good meeting. So what we're now, the next thing to happen with that is um, the wastewater treatment plant operator, the Weston and Sampson company that we're contracted with, needs to now be brought in. Once we came up with the, um, um, the plan and how we thought we might be able to enact that, we wanted to have that decision first before we invited them in, so that's the next thing that's going to happen. The other thing, I think it's probably a good time to mention the uh, the restroom uh, yes. uh, concession stand building was supposed to be delivered tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. Wednesday, but due to the storm and the need to prepare the site, that won't happen, so it'll be next Wednesday, right, or next? So what I understand now is um, there was a meeting this morning at the site to just kind of look at, you know, make sure everything was where they needed it to be. Right. And absent the snow removal that will need to take place, the decision was made to bump the delivery. They'll only deliver between Tuesday and Thursday. That's all this, the, the state doesn't call. allow it on Monday and right. Friday, right? So yeah. it's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday of next week, which I agreed to this morning when I was asked because it made sense with yeah. the storm coming in. We've got the weather. So it's a little bit delayed because of the weather, but that's the only reason. Otherwise, everything seems to be on track. And then the contractor had said it would be four or five days of work after the building is down, getting Correct. everything. The tie now that the, with the weather, the paving probably isn't gonna be able to take place, I'm I assuming. I think that's, yeah, very likely. <laughs> so that might take place later on, but they'll tie the building all up, everything will be connected, water, uh, wastewater, Correct. Um, all the facilities in the building. And Approximately five days after the yeah. delivery, yeah. Okay, anybody have anything else on the? The only thing I wanted to ask about is Ockers. John, where are we? Are we still working yes. with them? Yes, so we are still working with them. That, that is a new projector. It is. That is the new laser yeah. projector that, yeah. um, you're, and you're going to see. The last you did, but yeah. I think, you know, Michael's presentation tonight, I think is going to be, you know, is going to really give it a good workout, and I think you'll see that it's the, the quality is much improved. We've also had um, um, some work done in the um, Performing Arts Center, both cafeterias, gymnasium, um, the auxiliary gymnasium, just some, I'll, I'll say kind of like some troubleshooting of minor issues, all of which were very inexpensive to deal with. Um, so the gym audio sounded uh, yeah. 100 times. I will say that both the gym and the, and the Performing Arts Center, yeah. now part of it might be learning to use it right, but the sound quality since Ockers did that work yeah, is they, much better. And the work was not significant. It was, there were just adjustments they made, yeah. yeah. And, and I have to tell you, and I said it before, but they have been one of the better subcontractors that we've dealt with. They've really put themselves out there to make us completely satisfied. And I can tell you right now that uh, as far as I'm concerned, they have, they have made good on their promises. Yep. It's good. So. Great. And we still, have, we still have some things we want to do. Right. There's still funding available to do that. So right. it's, it's good news. Okay. Next we have uh, Mr. Conley is going to give us a presentation for the preliminary fiscal 2019 budget. Take a, you know, say, take a mic with you. Right. So there should have been a copy of the PowerPoint in your packet. Um, I also handed out an update. Um, it was one page, it was one slide in the presentation that we revised. It was a typo, and it was a handout placed on your on your um, at your stage before we got started today. Um, so I'm going to go over the preliminary budget and some of the, the topics I'll. I'll highlight this evening. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the budget challenges and the, the, the various revenue challenges, and fixed cost challenges that we face on an annual basis. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our budget priorities and budget goals that we voted in September. I'll talk about the major budget drivers. Um, then I'll get into the kind of the numbers and you know what's driving and what are some of the changes between FY18 and FY19. Um, then we'll get into some of the new staffing requests. I'll, driven by our NRPS 2021 strategic plan. Um, I'll talk a little bit about budget offsets and budget revenue offsets and the various budget subsidies that we've come to rely on. Talk a little bit about our cost saving measures that we continue to take on an annual basis. And then I'll kind of conclude with some budget conclusions and you know, hopefully leave plenty of time for some questions. So here are our budget challenges. Um, you know, first and foremost, you know, on the revenue side, uh, you know, North Reading for the last number of years has come to um, really be faced with 
flat state aid. You know, we, we haven't seen a significant increase in a number of years in unrestricted government local aid as well as our Chapter 70 aid. Um, the governor's proposal, which was released at the end of January, stands, um, you know, withstands to see the minimum increase of $20 per pupil, which amounts to a little over $48,000 for North Reading. So unfortunately, um, just in the way that Chapter 70 formula has kind of positioned itself in North Reading, um, we just are in a, in a state of, you know, position where we just can't rely heavily on an increase in Chapter 70 revenue and state aid. That has been very flat. And even when we see some of the recommendations of that Chapter 70 review commission that was put together a few years ago get implemented, like this year they did fund some of the um, benefits and increase the foundation budget for some benefits, not so much the special education piece. Um, you know, North Reading doesn't always stand to benefit from that. So we're sort of defaulting to that minimum aid um, amount on a pure pupil basis. So we continue to face that challenge. We continue to see some constrained local revenue. Obviously, we're capped at, you know, two and a half percent, proposition two and a half. So there's not a lot of, of significant amount of, of revenue, local revenue we can bring in on an ongoing basis. And then we see our fixed costs. So our fixed costs are certainly things like, um, first and foremost, our health insurance, uh, you know, general liability insurance costs, retirement costs. We have seen all these, you know, various fixed costs, um, you know, rise steadily, and in some cases, see, you know, significant increases, um, you know, seven percent, eight percent, nine percent increases um, over the last, you know, several years. So. Certainly when you have a situation where you have fixed costs rising, um, in some cases almost double the amount of, of revenue, um, it's gonna present that kind of structural funding challenge when we're trying to fund both school and municipal budgets. That's been the case, um, not only in North Riding, it's the case throughout the Commonwealth, it's a common trend, um, but it certainly it presents that, that structural challenge when trying to fund a, a school budget. Um, then we have our school revenue offsets. These are monies that we receive from our revolving accounts, from the fees that we charge, from the tuitions that we charge for tuition-based programs, as well as from the federal and state grants we receive, from the state circuit breaker program, from special education costs that we receive, the reimbursements that we receive from the state. Um, and those are kind of limited. There's not so much that we can do. We can't increase those significantly in any given year. We have worked very hard to sort of level up off these school revenue offsets from revolving accounts and grants um, to try to avoid that, you know, funding, you know, falling off the funding cliff and having any one year these revenue offsets go down. Um, so you can kind of see that the, the ebbs and flows of our revenue offsets over the last eight or nine years or so. Fiscal 2011, 2012, high, you know, those begin to increase in those years highlighted by the, you know, the error, the error years, the American you know, stimulus years when you had the, the economy. Um, we were given some additional federal funding during those years. Then you saw a little bit of a drop off in fiscal 2013. Um, fiscal 2014 was a very challenging budget year. The, the fund, the town only appropriated 1.8% of a general fund budget. So we used a lot of revolving count reserve, reserves that had built up over a period of time and one-time revenue offsets to make that budget work that year. So then, because of that, you saw a little bit of a decline for the next two years. And over these past three years, in fiscal 17, uh, there was some user fee increases for athletic programs, you know, slightly, <laughs> and some of the other programs like busing that resulted in a little bit of an increase there. And then we've been really working hard to you know, take a conservative spending approach and trying to keep our revenue offsets as consistent as we can. And that's kind of where we're faced with fiscal 18, fiscal 19. So Michael, just so I'm clear, this is the money that is above and beyond what the town Correct. appropriates from taxes. Absolutely, yeah. So you add this to the town appropriation and that's yeah. our total budget, yeah. correct? So you'll see at the end, I'm gonna get into, um, highlight this more, um, a lot clearer where you'll see what the what we're asking for the town to appropriate at town meeting what the general fund or operating budget consists of and as as chairman webster just indicated this is above and beyond that this is the revolving accounts and our grants that we've come to rely on and they all make the school budget work and able to fund what we need to to, to make the educational experience what it's been here in north Reading. um 
And then our contractual obligations. So certainly, you know, these are um, you know, our obligations in, a, in most cases to help fund um, you know, adjustments, negotiated you know, cost of living adjustments, um, as well as you know, step or longevity increases for eligible staff. Um, but certainly salaries make up a huge piece of a school budget over 82%, and that's, that's always a, you know, both a challenge and a, and, a, and a driver, which you'll see in a moment of the school budget. I'm going to skip ahead to, uh, before I get into some of the budget drivers, just kind of show you that this you know, pie chart and it's something that we've come to look at on an ongoing basis. And this doesn't change. This has been, you know, I've been putting this chart together for the last five years, and this has been very consistent. Obviously, local property taxes make up over 71%. That's the largest revenue picture for the school budget. Um, then you have state aid I just spoke of. That's the Chapter 70 aid as well as the, the local aid to the, um, to the town that helps fund the school and the town budget, local receipts, various local receipts, town charges. Again, that's kind of certainly limited to what they can do. And then the bar graph I just showed that we just talked about um, from revolving accounts and grants make up the remaining piece. But these, this breakdown and these stats have been very similar over the last number of years. So the school committee voted their budget priorities um, in September, their budget goals. There was a lot more than what's highlighted on this slide, but I just thought I would highlight some of the, the major dry, uh, priorities in the budget. Um, certainly maintaining educationally sound class sizes has always been a, a budget priority, both of the school committee and, of, and for the administration in the district, in particular. At the, at the primary grades, the elementary level, you know, kindergarten through grades one, grade two, grade three, we want to maintain sound class sizes. And this budget that we're proposing tonight certainly achieves that and accomplishes that objective. Um, we want to implement year three of NRPS 2021. So the NRPS 2021 document is our educational strategic plan. And that has really been the, an active document that the administration works on on an ongoing basis that we update annually. We look at what we were able to accomplish this current fiscal year in 2018, and we update that you know, each summer at an administrative retreat and that is presented um, you know, to the school committee on an annual basis. And, and our uh, FY19 would represent year three of that strategic plan. And there are certainly positions um, that we've highlighted in the recommended budget, which I'll get to in a moment, um, that we hope to fund, uh, you know, fund during this FY19 budget development process. Um, always a priority, maintain commitment to upkeep the school facilities. I'll show some bar graphs in a moment that just show you how much we've kind of devoted, have had to reallocate additional funding in this area to help support not only this beautiful state-of-the-art you know, complex middle school, high school campus that we've come to, to love, over the last few years, um, as well as the element, the three elementary campuses as well. Um, and then restoring school expense operating budgets. This recommended budget I'm presenting this evening would, would achieve this, would accomplish this. This is something we've fallen short of over the last number of years. It's been in the preliminary phase. We've had to back it up out later on during the budget development process. We hope not to have to do that um, this year. We think it's a, certainly a high priority um, it's something that certainly needs to happen. You know, those expense budgets, which are essentially the instructional materials and so forth, that discretionary spending that brings the materials at the school level and technology items and, um, into the classroom, um, almost cannot get by with another year of level funded or reductions in that area. So that is a, a, a top priority. And then certainly we work with that finance, finance planning team, so we want to certainly present a budget that meets the needs of all students and continue to collaborate with the finance planning team. Um, and we certainly hope to continue to do that throughout this process. So the budget drivers, and it's, you know, these, it's funny, I was talking to Mr. Bernard and the administrative team, these drivers were uh, certainly very similar to what you saw probably in fiscal 2018, um, similar to what We've seen really in the last two or three years as we've we developed the FY19 budget. Um, I talked a little bit about contractual salary obligations, and salaries represent 82.6% of our total budget request, um, which is a pretty typical stat for funding school budgets. And salary, our salary obligations are always a major driver of the school budget. So this 
proposal this evening includes the cost of living adjustments as well as costs for step increases, lane movements, in some cases longevity increases for eligible staff. Um, this contractual obligation for all staff um, based on the 5.3% total budget increase in our recommended budget being presented this evening. Contractual salary obligations to fund some of those modest cost of living adjustments for all staff um, represent a 2.5% in total increase in, in the budget. So it's certainly always a major driver given that salaries represent over 82% of, of our total request, operating budget request. The NRPS 2021 document, I just spoke of that. In a moment, you're going to see me go through some of the, the top priority positions the administration has highlighted. And um, certainly a, a big part of this process is always that strategic plan that we've worked so hard on as an administrative team and has gotten the support of the school committee and the community to try to make, you know, bring that, that document to fruition and that plan to fruition. Our operational costs, um, you know, certainly our you know, building ma maintenance, um, that's become a priority. It's um, an, a key objective to you know, add preventative maintenance measures into the school budget. Um, so that's a big part of this proposal. Um, the cost for, for busing, both regular transportation busing, the 10 buses we run on a daily basis. Um, there's also special education you know, costs as well for special education transportation. Um, but <coughs> next year would represent the third year of the contract of our existing busing contract for regular transportation. And that rate is going up about $15 per day per bus. So that definitely uh, was a little bit of a driver operationally. We had to account for that increase. And then utilities. So you'll see in a moment some, some, some bar graphs about what some of our utilities costs have been and how we've had to um, allocate some additional resources to um, address some increases in utility costs. You know, the electricity costs of this building are certainly high and across the, um, the district. We've seen um, those rates increase and so forth. So we've had to kind of manage that and, and that's also a driver of this budget. Um, special education costs, always a driver, a huge driver and a huge part of any school, uh, school budget. And that's certainly been the case in North Reading. Um, and that is certainly a big part of the story as we develop fiscal 2009 um, you know, budget. You know, certainly funds needed to support our anticipated out of district tuition costs are expected to increase in fiscal year 2019. The FY18 budget included a, an estimate that we would have 36 students in out of district placements and the FY19 budget was staying pretty stable around. We actually are projecting about 35 students, so a slight decline in the amount of students that were educating out of district. Um, but they're actually seeing an increase um, as a result of students you know, needing to be educated in some cases more expensive placements to adequately meet their needs. Um, but I think it's fair to say that the district continues to evaluate its special education programs. And certainly where appropriate, we've reallocated current resources to provide additional student support services and in particular increase social and emotional support. So these programs that the student has both you know, in district that we continue to evaluate, evaluate and develop on an annual basis um, certainly assist with reducing the potential need for additional outside placements and special education services. But um, certainly a big part of any school budget and certainly a big part of our, our FY19 you know, request. Um, and then I talked a little bit about a moment ago in our school expense budgets and our small capital needs. Unfortunately, we've had to level fund these requests or reduce these requests. We've had to eliminate our, our small capital budget line items. And we think this is a big part, big priority. It's something that we want to see um, funded. And that's why it's part of our recommended request. Um, we're attempting to um, the total uh, expense budget increases in this budget uh, account to $29,500. So rather modest amount in a, you know, over $30 million, $31 million budget request. And that amount will certainly help um, the principals bring the, the appropriate materials into the classroom. Um, and we're hoping to restore our small capital line item, small amount of about $15,000 to help fund and address some small capital needs that don't qualify for large capital needs, um, items like you know, bell system repairs, you know, carpet replacement, fence repairs, um, and so forth would help, help us continue to, to meet, those, meet those needs. 
now when you look at this chart, I think you can kind of see many of the, the budget drives I just spoke to at play. So here's the FY18 budget that we're in currently. Here's our recommended FY19 budget, um, broken down into these five major categories. Um, so you can see some of the, the salary um, adjustments due to our contractual obligations, as well as to our attempt to fund some positions, which I'll talk about in a moment, driven by NRPS 2021, would account for a little over a million dollar increase or 4.1% increase over fiscal 18. Instructional expenses, uh, about 5% increase. Again, that's our attempt to restore some instructional materials, allocate some additional funding for, for small capital needs, for technology, accounts for about a 5% increase from FY19 over FY18. Operational maintenance needs, that's the needs to, to address our, our busting, regular busting <coughs> going up, utilities going up, and so forth. And um, you can see a modest increase there, 3.1%. So we have worked very hard to to manage our operational costs um, and, and keep those increases uh, very modest uh, you know, where, where we can. Transportation, so that actually this is where you're, you're really seeing the transportation increase that I spoke of that on, the, on the regular um, contract with that rate going up from 330 to 345. And then what perhaps is the biggest part of the story that I just spoke of is the special education kind of district tuition costs you see rather large increase in fiscal 19. Um, in some cases, that is a little misleading because it's, it's, we're, we're kind of dealing with a, a little bit of a, of a, of a double uh, you know, impact there where we're seeing an increase in um, tuition costs that are going up. Um, and we're also seeing the need to decrease our revenue offset because of that special education reimbursement program program, the amount that the state has funded that program was not fully supported in fiscal 18. That program has been funded at 65%. If it was fully funded, it would have been funded at 75%. So we've needed to make an adjustment there. Um, so that's also impacting this, this line item and the reason why you're looking at, you know, as maybe as large of a change. Michael, yes. Is that just fed? This is just special, special education. Yes. It isn't always the case, but this is the case for this year. It is. Thanks. So um, overall, we're asking for a recommended budget of a little over $1.5 million increase over fiscal 18, $31 million, 198533 And that would represent a 5.3% increase over fiscal 18. Um, so some of the other numbers that are in here, I'm not sure what happened to... Those other ones are secret. We don't want to. Yeah, you know what? They, were, they weren't those categories. Like a moment ago. So. <laughs> Only the salaries. Need to know. Um, Click again, Michael. You know, I think that kind of happened when I printed it. Oh. But if you don't mind, I'm just going to take a minute and fix that. Um, there you go. So if you look at some of our total requests, um, this middle, which I just I actually just lost, but this middle line item is. The salaries, and that is actually 82.6% um, of the budget, as I, as I spoke to earlier, is made up of our salary amount. Um, and again, that's pretty, pretty common in school budgets to, to see salaries be over 80% over 80, 80 so that's- and Michael, that I think one other important thing there is it's 83% and when you look at, we have almost 400 employees, not all full time in the school district, we probably have 80%, if not more, of the total employees in North Reading. Correct. And so when you put a budget together, even if you give people, which we do, we give them modest increases, right. Right. it makes it almost impossible to add the things educationally that you want to add. And I'll get to the yep. reasons why, because it's the state's fault, but. No, that's a great point. And it's, you know, when you have so much of the budget, the operating budget is fixed because you have these, you know, a large piece is the salaries and the need to fund those contractual salary obligations. And a lot of, you know, most of these items on this list are items out of our control. You know, you have, our, you have the salaries, you have things like, you know, meeting some state mandates and funding the, the tuition costs, transportation increases that I just spoke of operations and maintenance needs, utilities going up every year, that those rates going up. Um, there's not a lot of discretionary spending that's represented in the school budget, and that, that's always the biggest challenge of the year. Um, but these, these stats and these percentages are very consistent with prior years. I think the biggest, 
amount that's changed is the tuitions a year ago was about five and a half percent of our total makeup, so it's now about a percent higher. Um, you know, operations and maintenance has gone down slightly, but these you know very similar. I think last year we were about about eighty three percent was our salaries. So I'll talk a little bit about facilities and maintenance costs. I won't keep keep mentioning it, but I just wanted to show you some some additional information and stats. And this bar graph talks a little bit about that need to devote additional funding and additional resources to meet our facility maintenance needs. And we started to do this a few years ago, and we continue to see that need. We continue to um, learn more about the, the true funding need to help to adequately support this building and all of our schools. Um, certainly what's changed a lot from fiscal 15 to fiscal 16 when you see that when you saw that jump occur was the opening of the school so this certainly this is a, a beautiful school and we certainly want to, to uh, invest the the adequate resources to put the maintenance and preventative maintenance measures in to to make certainly protect the investment that this town has, has made and we have learned more over the last few years and we are, we are definitely starting to do that um, but to do that appropriately means allocating additional resources, in some cases other areas, to, to make this happen. But we, it's a priority and we've certainly made those adjustments. Um, so these are actual numbers through FY17, FY8, that FY18 number is a budget number. I think you know, we are working hard to keep our needs within that allotment, within that budget number. But we're seeing FY19 go up a little bit and that's just some ad adjusting some of those line items for various factors like the plumbing needs, wastewater treatment facility, that contract's going up next year, so there's a need to make an adjustment there. Um, utilities are going up, so that, that's certainly a need to make, make that adjustment. Yes. Mike, just to clarify too, this is for the district. It's not just for this building. So that's, this is district-wide. Correct. Wide. Oh yeah, this is right. district-wide. Just, just so everybody Absolutely. knows, yeah. So this, well, I, these are our costs throughout the district, and um, you know, certainly this, certainly the, this you know, building's a factor as we've had to you know, deal with things you haven't had to deal with before, like the wastewater treatment facility. Right, I wanted to point that out. That you, you take that's two hundred thousand dollars. The wastewater treatment plant. We didn't have a wastewater treatment plant until uh, 19, uh, 1915, <laughs> 2000. <laughs> yep. Nineteen fifty. Yeah, that's when I started on the school committee in nineteen fifteen. We didn't have one, but that's two hundred thousand dollars alone. That's correct. So two. That didn't exist. That facility didn't, didn't exist. exist. Right four years ago correct and we've certainly seen things like the HVAC the cooling and heating system you know we want to we want to protect that investment we want to put the preventative maintenance contracts in place and we have done that and it's, it's worked out it's well and we're learning more the energy management system and so forth but that exists district-wide and it's, it's um, certainly a need um, to to increase these line items and we, we've certainly done that as you can see by this by this bar graph Michael? yes <coughs> That spiking or I, we, we hope not. So I, we, we see this leveling off. As you can see, it is not, wasn't a huge increase from, from 18 to 19. I think FY17, we learned a lot in fiscal 17 in terms of that actual number. I think we probably exceeded our, our budget a little bit in that year. That's why we made the appropriate adjustments. And you can see FY18 being very similar to the, the amount of actual that we spent. So we're seeing that level off. I think we've learned a lot. I think we've, made, we've already made some of those adjustments. That's why you're not seeing as much of an increase as you once had did, but you know certainly, um, you know certainly hope. But I think I, I'd also add, um, Laurie, that one of the other expenses that's gone up now that we've um, irrigated the new fields that we have. There's an additional right. water cost. Yeah, However, we are working in the whole district to bring down electricity costs by um, bringing LED lights into yep. the buildings. So that's going to take a couple of years at least, mm -hmm. but it's been shown that that has a significant reduction in cost. But um, as Michael said, I, th I think we have a pretty good handle on it now. I mean, it's always gonna go up because of inflation, but I don't, I don't see right. any, any major jumps. I agree, and, and this, this chart, uh, bar graph speaks a little bit about what Mr. Webster just mentioned in terms of the electricity costs and the water costs. We certainly are supporting a new, a new meter with the irrigation system down in the new athletic fields, which came out great. Um, but we've had to make some line item adjustments there, both this year and, and into next year. Um, but we are working hard in terms of regulating our, our boilers and our setting our schedules um, to, to manage these costs as, as best we can. I think we're doing a, a very solid job in that. Um, our gas costs next year, believe it or not, are going down. So we, we 
participate in kind of a floating you know, gas bid and we, it gives us the flexibility to monitor that market and try to lock in at an optimum time and we did that. So we're actually, um, a lot of the reason why this is kind of staying level next year is because our, our gas budget is actually going down. We're reducing those line items because we're actually going to be paying less um, for gas than we are this year. So I want to talk a little bit about enrollment before I get to some of the staffing increases. So uh, this is our 10-year enrollment projection chart, pre-K through grade 12. Um, the yellow graph is where we stand today. At, this is our October 1 enrollment at 2,493 students. Um, so as you can see, you know, over the next 10 years, overall enrollment district-wide, when you look at across the, the 12 and 13 grades of, of preschool, through grade 12 is projected to decline kind of moderately. Um, and then we do see it, you know, three to five years out start to level off, um, you know, around 2,450 students or so before we may start to see an increase, you know, seven, eight years down the road. Um, but there's not major changes at any level, uh, you know, that, that would really lead to any significant staffing changes or staffing adjustments. Um, you know, when you have 30 or 40 students over the entire district, across five schools, across 13 grades, pre-K through grade 12, you're not gonna capture any significant staffing changes. We don't, we, we do, I'm not seeing a need to increase any staffing because of enrollment changes. Um, there's some changes amongst grade levels and schools and so forth, but um, you know, this is kind of where we're at based on the information that we have you know, today. Um, essentially, K through five enrollments are forecasted to actually increase by about 27 students over the next three years. Um, the middle school is projected to uh, remain relatively stable between 545 and 550 students. About the representative of middle school, grade six through grade 12. Where you'd see the largest change in the, ne in the immediate future over the next three years would be at the high school level, as you have some of these higher class sizes that are beginning to graduate. Some of the smaller class sizes at the middle school will begin to work their way onto the, um, up to the high school. So, um, you know, next year we think we'll, we see a decline of potentially up to you know 30 or so students at the high school level. But again, over four grades, you know, it's not a significant change that we're dealing with. So it's relatively low. You see some decline. It's relatively moderate um, over the next 10 years. I, I look at this and I say we have the same enrollment for the next 10 years yeah, it, yeah. because the way we budget and the way you sure. Yep. You have to allocate teachers and resources unless you lose a couple hundred, 300 kids. You're not making a lot of changes. You lose right. 10 or 20 students. It's three or four kids per grade. Exactly. It, it's, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, just, I know how you project, but could you just explain how you make these and what you project? Yeah, so we use a, a method called a progressive um, you know, enrollment projection method. So we basically look at past data and trends in historical data based on changes amongst grade level. Um, and we're basically using the assumption that what's happened in the past will happen in the future. So we see what students kind of progress from one grade into the next grade, and that can develop a percentage of students that, for lack of a better term, I guess that kind of survive to the next grade. And then we analyze those trends over three years, five years, and 10 years and that can come up with a pretty reliable percentage of what we think will happen in the future. And that's the process we go through each and every year. Uh, we do update that, update that information every year, and that's how we can kind of come up with these, these numbers. But don't you also, you adjust based on maybe do, the, right. the market, there's a big change right. over, turnover in homes in North Reading or yeah, new developments, which we don't have a lot of new developments Thank you, with yes. a lot of children. Right, but so we look at market trends, what's going on um, in the real estate market and so forth, the yeah, turnover of homes, homes sold, permits pilled, you know, pulled from the town, those types of things, um, and we, we make adjustments. So I talked about NRPS 2021, this chart depicts um, what the administration has identified as the top, um, what we felt were the, the top priority positions um, educationally to achieve our, our needs. And these 3.9 FTE positions are reflected in our recommended budget. Um, the total amount is 248508 so it represents actually in total only a 0.8% increase of our, our recommendation that's on the table, which is 5.3% increase from FY18 to FY19. So there are a lot of other positions 
in our NRPS 2021 strategic plan, which I'm actually going to show and highlight a little bit later on in the presentation so everyone is aware of what the other positions are. It is a challenge every year that the administration kind of sits and goes through to identify and, and, uh, what positions we will recommend. Uh, we would love to be standing here, as Mr. Bernard can tell you, and recommending all those positions because we think they are all extremely important and all serve a very significant need. Um, but we are trying to find that balance between what the community and certainly the <coughs> board and how we can continue to achieve NRPS 2021 and move the district forward. So that document um, certainly identifies three major strategy areas, you know, student support services, um, teaching and learning, and technology integration were the three major strategy areas that that document um, walks us through. So the focus, as you can see here, tends to be on student support services. So we've achieved some technology integration initiatives in the past. You know, FY19, the story seems to be we're focusing on student support services. Um, but certainly the school adjustment counselor at the high school level, um, we feel this is necessary to address an increasing need for student support at the high school. Currently, there's only one full-time school adjustment counselor serving over 808 students. Um, this position will provide important short-term and ongoing counseling services to students who struggle with social, emotional, and behavioral problems. Um, the elementary team chairperson, certainly you can, this position was on the list last year. Many of these positions were on the list last year that we were not able to, to fund in fiscal 2018. This was one of them. Um, but we feel this will assist the district with providing the additional support to elementary students with special needs and allow for the enhanced development of, of special education programs and supports that will better meet the needs of all students. Um, the point four FTE school psychologists at the bachelor school. The population of the bachelor school requires additional student support in the areas of testing and counseling. The point four FTE increase will allow students to have the necessary supports to access and participate fully in the general education classroom. So bachelor is obviously the largest elementary school and we feel that's certainly a need that was also on the list last year. This next list uh, position, the academic teacher at the high school this has been on the list over the last few years and unfortunately has not been fully funded. Um, but certainly we feel this position will reduce class sizes and particularly in both the mathematics and science uh, curriculum areas. Currently 40% of the core course offerings in these two departments have 28 or more students and 58% have <coughs> over 25 students. So reducing class sizes will allow for more personalized instruction and thus enhanced learning. So. To go along with that request, I've included some information about the core academic class sizes at the high school. So this is information we um, monitor and look at on an ongoing annual basis. I've shown a similar chart in years past. We've yet to make the progress that we've desired, although we have worked to, to achieve some, some progress in this area, but certainly this is number of classes here on the vertical axis, on the horizontal axis is the number of students. So ideally we'd want to be all in the blue. Um, you know, class size is 20, you know, under 24. So we still have in our core academic classes, I just spoke to a high amount of classes, um, you know, over 24 or 25 students and even some in the, in the 28, 29, 30 and 31 range. So we want that position, although you're seeing a decline potentially of about 30 students at the high school, we feel this position is still needed to bring class sizes within optimum levels and to help these, these stats that we're looking at here. The final position that's being recommended was also a, repeat, a, a position that was on the list last year. Unfortunately, was not able to get funded at the Little Elementary School, a .5 FTE reading teacher. This will allow the school to be more fully, to allow them to more fully implement response to intervention strategies, to intervene immediately for students who may be struggling. This will assist the school to provide support necessary to students in all grade levels. So um, the total is 3.9 FTE um, increase for two, two, $248,508. Just a quick question, Mike. Yes. I'm ca calculating that that's just a little over a quarter of 2021 plan, of the 2021 plan. Yep, I think that's yes. That's right. That's, that's right. a quarter of what the plan, what the strategic plan, plan is, is laying out. That's correct. And it is only 0.8% of what 
our total increase would be next year. So. Well, and most of those were also rejected uh, last year. I mean, Correct. we this not rejected. We had to take them out of the budget. I want to say four out of these five. I think they were on almost the list all. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yes. They were all. They were all on the list last year. So, well, we'll get to it later. Uh, I just want. I'm going to address when we talk about implementing our NRPS plans. It seems sure. we never are able to implement our NRPS plans, but we can talk about that later. So, and I'm going to get into a few more slides here, then I'll that kind of speak to the total amount of the budget and the recommendation, the difference between what's being asked for the appropriation by the town and what the additional offsets are, and then I'll get into some of the budget conclusions and so forth and uh, cost saving measures. So here's FY18, here's our FY19 recommendation as I showed earlier, a little over $31.1 million, 5.3% increase. Here's that decline in revenue offsets. What's driving that is the loss of circuit breaker revenue by the state, and that's the result of that program not being fully funded this year. You have two years to spend that, those funds, and we, in most cases, experienced that um, impact the following year. So we had, had a need to reduce that offset next year to account for the lower percentage of reimbursement amount. Uh, in this existing fiscal year. The other, the other impact there has to do with the full day kindergarten program, and that's just simply a numbers issue, the amount of students enrolled in full day kindergarten in, the, in kindergarten as a whole has, has, has slightly lower than this year, so we've had to make an adjustment there. Um, but overall, the, for total school funds, when you include the amount we're asking to be appropriated by the town and the, our other budget subsidies, is actually 33 million 856 651 um, and that increase over FY18 is a little over close to 1.5 million dollars and that doesn't even tell the full picture so at each meeting um, you, you, the school committee accepts a various amount of donations and significant support from our not only our parents groups and PTOs but various private donors and, and uh, businesses in the area um, as well as our, our athletic groups, sport groups. The annual average, and this has gone up from the last, from a few years ago, is about $250,000 of, of annual gifts that we've come to accept to help fund things like in our athletic program, help offset transportation, help fund technology needs and so forth. So a variety of things go into that, enrichment programs. And then you have the, the five parent groups um, and a lot of their in-kind gifts and donations that we've done a much better job tracking over the last couple of years. Um, their budgets add up to about $75,000. So a lot more goes into it to make the full picture of what, how we are funding the school and to make the, the total North Reading package what it is. Um, really quick, just, just breaks down salaries and expenses and some of the differences in, in what the, the offsets have been. Um, and like I said, we're a little over about 30, a little over 31.1 million dollars for our recommended increase. It's 5.3 percent increase in our recommendation. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this chart. This is the one chart, by the way, that was different. There's some typo, um, so I updated this. So that was why I had a supplemental handout to the school committee this evening. Um, but if you look at, we started this process with three budgets, and we've kind of done that on an annual basis. Um, over the last couple of years. And we, we start out and we look at level services, and that's kind of what will it take to achieve the same amount of services that we have today, given changes in enrollment and so forth, as well as changes in um, necessary adjustments for fixed cost increases, utilities, maintenance, the busing contracts going up, salary obligations, all those fixed cost um, adjustments that we have to make. Um, as well as the need to restore those inst instructional expense budgets that I talked about earlier and some small capital line items. That budget would be a budget um, a little under 31 million, 30 million, 950, 025, or a 4.4% increase. And again, when we look at the things that are kind of out of our control that we have to do, contractual salary obligations, a little over 2.5%, adjustments for special education out of district needs, meet some state mandates, about a 1% increase from last year, adjustments in utilities and operational needs, you know, another 0 0.1, 0 0.2%. .1, we are essentially at 4 or 4.1% alone before we get to anything else that we're trying to do, you know, differently or um, um, in terms of 
happens. So, so that, that is, Mr. Webster talked about a little earlier, a big, a big part of the school budget and a big challenge. The budget that we just presented that we're recommending is this 5.3% increase. And like I said, the biggest change here would be those, the, the only difference between the middle column that we're recommending this evening and the level services column would be those 3.9 FTE positions driven by NRPS 2021. That was 248,508. I said it was 0.8%, I think it's 0.85%. So it's rounding out to a 5.3% budget increase. If money was not a factor, and we were standing up here um, and rep uh, recommending the, uh, a full requested budget, all the requests by the principals for instructional materials, all the positions highlighted in our NRPS 2021 strategic plan, um, we would be looking at a budget increase of around 8.3%. Um, so what are those, some of those positions that we did not reflect in the recommended budget but are in our NRPS strategic plan? I won't go through all of them uh, for the sake of time this evening, but they are kind of highlighted in your, in your budget books. Um, but I just wanted to kind of highlight that there would be an additional 10 and a half FTE positions totaling about six, an additional $688,000 and change. Um, and the, you know, generally this is guided by positions that would expand the foreign language program, um, add positions to enhance our social and emotional academic support services, continuing to en enhance our digital learning model, add administrative su support to assist the elementary curriculum leadership model, and address the need for additional supervision and evaluation support. Like I said, the administration struggles every year with identifying from this list um, you know, positions that we feel you know, we are going to you know, recommend. Um, positions not reflected in the recommended, uh, in the, I'm sorry, in RPS 2021, and also not reflected in, in our recommended budget this evening that we also think operationally are in need um, is a, a 1.0 FTE school nurse um, to help bring some of those ratios at the secondary level more in line with what the, the standard is or the recommendation is. And certainly the building and grounds department, these positions have been on this list in the past. That facilities engineer, again, this building is highly technical with the energy management system, the lighting system, and various, various needs of the system. We feel this position would um, potentially also offset the contractual services on the other end, um, but we certainly feel that is needed. And then another maintenance and grounds custodian um, again, there's, there's a lot of um, additional grounds area um, throughout our, not only the district as well as this campus. Um, so before I conclude, I have a few, few more slides. Operating budget history, I just want to glance at what's happened over the last 12 years and how our request this evening kind of stacks up with what's been going on and supported through um, the town appropriation. So these are all percentages supported by the town appropriation over the last uh, 12 years or so and what's interesting if you look if you actually looked at some of the the, the percentages or the, the of what our school revenue offsets have been in the earlier chart I showed it's very much aligned uh, with some of these increases so when you had a big revenue offset increase uh, you know the appropriation was a little bit smaller um, but the 12-year average has been 3.94 percent and we are asking for 5.3 percent this evening the amount that's been funded over the last two years has been 3.8 percent maybe just below the 12-year average um, this is data that we do analyze on an ongoing basis this is actually hot off the press um, the, the state just er, last week released the FY 17 pure pupil spending amounts and compared that to to the state North Reading has always been below the per pupil average in the state, and that is certainly the case right now, or in FY17. The amount that we're spending on a pure pupil basis, we look at both special education, uh, our district costs, as well as in district costs, on average is 14597 The Massachusetts state average is about a little over 5% higher than that at 15392 So, you know, we continue to provide high quality education at lowest spending levels in North Reading when compared to the state. So Michael, just to follow up on that, we, we have about, um, we fall almost in the middle of uh, yep. state school districts. There's about 170 that spend less than we do and about 130 that spend more than we do. 
it's a big improvement. Before at the year I came onto the school committee, we were eighth from the bottom in per people spending. Yep. So we've, we've made a, a, a quite a significant improvement and yet we still, we're still below the state average. Yep, absolutely. Um, so I've shown this chart in the past um, at, at various presentations, but I just, I just, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it this evening, but you know, get the question in the past um, by many community members who are just curious to know what the user fee or tuition-based programs, what the percent amount of the revenue we bring in on an annual basis, how much of that actually supports the direct costs of that program. And we have five main fees or user fees or tuitions and programs, our optional bus transportation program, again, that's non-special education transportation, our athletic program, our extracurricular activity program at the middle school and the high school, obviously the tuition for full day kindergarten and the preschool program. So in most cases that you can see overall, the amount of the user fee and the tuition that we're assessing to the community and to the parents um, is actually a little under 50% of our act direct costs in the program. That's direct costs for you know, staffing and direct expenses related to that program. Uh, we work hard to contain our costs um, and certainly um, these are some highlighted uh, um, areas where we've worked hard to not only save funds but you know, contain, contain our costs. School expense budgets, we, we certainly are aggressively purchased from state bid lists that allows us to get the be best educational discount for our instructional materials and technology expenses that come to the schools. Utilities, natural gas and electric electricity, we modulate our bo boilers and our schedules and our lighting controls to make sure we're not you know, heating or lighting any area that, that is um, certainly not being uh, occupied. Uh, our gas rates, I spoke earlier of how, what we've done to reduce the gas rate. Um, special education, again, continued commitment to keep students in our schools um, through the design of customized programming. Um, SEAM Collaborative, so we are a member of two collaboratives, SEAM Collaborative and, and the North Shore Education Consortium that helps us receive educational discounts on students that attend those programs as well as professional development opportunities for our staff. And the shared transportation model SEAM there are 12 communities that feed into SEAM that are part of this transportation model. So when we have students that are going to out district placements in the area, like Melrose, Wakefield, Reading, Wilmington, and we can put those students on the same special education van or bus, we share that cost. And that's a significant saver. I've done some analysis. It's about, you know, in the range of forty dollars to $50,000 annual savings by participating in that shared transportation model. Food service program, we've worked very hard to reduce the general fund of the operating budget subsidy. It, that subsidy in fiscal 18 is currently zero. And um, a few years ago, that was over $100,000. So we've worked very, very hard in that program to increase our, our sales and to control production costs, labor costs, to make that a possibility. And then just our constant vigilance with respect to our daily operations. I think it's fair to say we are conservative and we review things very, very closely. We always try to do our, our homework and our, d our due diligence to make sure that we're spending our money wisely. So our total recommended budget conclusions, again, I think it's, you know, this budget that we're recommending this evening, um, you know, will we'll certainly achieve, uh, allow us to meet our contractual obligations with staff. Um, it does include a salary pool to address the, the impact of teaching negotiations, which we're currently involved in does include additional staffing to achieve uh, improved class sizes for enhanced teaching and learning, mainly you know, talked about the high school and that priority to keep class sizes, particularly in the elementary grades at optimum levels. A continuation of special education programs to meet the needs of students, and you saw in our PS 2021 this evening, focusing, focusing on student support strategy, social and emotional learning needs of students, academic support for identified students. That was certainly a focus of our request in NRPS 2021 for next year. Um, continue to support costs to properly operate and maintain, again, not only this campus, but all five schools um, throughout, throughout the district. And we always seek to meet the needs of all students, but in particular districts, high need student population. And our recommended budget this evening does restore those instructional expense budgets at each school. Some of the next steps. Um, ongoing discussions with the finance planning team. We have definitely have work to do 
It's not too far off where we've been at this stage. I know it looks very alarming on paper. The present gap to our recommended budget presented this evening, the 5.3% budget is a little over 1.2 million. Um, a level services budget um, with instructional <coughs> expense restorations, a small cap restorations, uh, which is a very minor amount, uh, would be that gap is about 955,394. We had a school committee budget workshop scheduled on March 22nd. I've talked about um, a budget webinar that we're going to try to release to the public for those public that are not able to attend this evening. They, they might hear an abbreviated version of this, this, this presentation, as well as a, a, an opportunity to ask questions. Um, we're looking to do that on March 30th between 12 and 1. We pushed that date off a little bit. That might have been in the original slide. It's just a lot of snow days to try to give us a little, little bit more time. The public hearing is scheduled on April 9th in this room at 6.30 p.m. It's a Monday evening. Presentation to the Finance Committee will be on April 25th. The School Committee is scheduled to take a vote on April 30th. Town meeting is on Monday, June 4th. We'll continue to await state budget actions. The governor's budget's out there. We're we waiting um, response from the House and the Senate. And we'll continue to discuss this budget and deliberate with the school committee, the budget subcommittee, seek input from the community, parents, staff, as we move throughout this process. That being said, open up to any questions. Great, thank you. Questions from the committee? <coughs> Why are you back. moving, or Scott? I mean, I, I have comments and questions. I mean, I would, I would just start I with- I only said, no, you can do both comments and questions. Um, I'll reserve most of my specific ones from the budget for the workshop, but I would start with just thanking Mr. Connolly for the work tonight because when I go through the budget, I always r start writing questions down and usually two or three pages later, I, I see a slide that answers it. So I appreciate the work um, and the thoughtfulness that goes into it. I'll let Mr. Webster go on about chapter 70 more than I will, but I will say I want to just congratulate Brockton for suing the state for finally uh, trying to make them hold, hold them accountable for what they're not funding. But two specific concerns, number one, the circuit breaker. I mean, I, I don't, going from 75% to 65% is, I just don't know how we get over that loss. I mean, it, it's, it's criminal what they've done taking that funding away. Yeah. Um, and my other concern about special education specifically, it seemed like in the budget, the out of district, what's driven a lot of that increase is it seems like more and more of the students that are out of district are not in the collaboratives either seem like the collaborative number when it's not as much as not even in the collaboratives. I'm just wondering, is there anything we can do to, are there other collaboratives, are there things we could do? Because even if we could bring students back into the collaboratives that we pay for, it would be less expensive than some of the programs that we're, we're funding. And obviously, special education students deserve a full education. My son's on an IEP, and so, you know, that we have to give them students what they need, but I'm just wondering, because it seems like the collaborative amount has gone down for next year, where the, whereas outside of the collaborative has gone up. Yeah, so certainly I think that's a fair um, observation. And I, we have experienced students that actually are aging out. Um, and we had hoped that this might be a year, um, given this quite a few students, about four or five students that are actually aging out of the, of the, of the programs next year. Um, they happen to be at the collaboratives. Um, so that is a big part of maybe that cost shift that you're seeing there, and that's a, you know, a fair observation. I think in our efforts as, an, as, as a staff and as you know, administration and is to just really, the ultimate goal is to find the appropriate you know, placement to meet that student needs. And it's, it's, it's not, only, uh, not always an easy process, it's challenging. We always um, you know, work to try to you know, recommend collaboratives and, and, and work with our two collaboratives that we are members of. Um, but in some cases, that's just not able to meet those needs and there's those, those changes that take place. But I think um, we are seeing a, a, a decline in the number of students currently placed at those two collaboratives. I think it's in some cases those students have done well and they're actually aging out of those programs. And we've seen some of that shift happening um, either in, in out of district private day placement or residential placement in some cases that's added to that cost for next year. And do, do we think that I, I know the one position that I was arguing for a lot last year and a lot of the people in the school committee then were was that elementary coordinator position yep. which again I mean it's, it's it's hindsight and I don't know that you can line it up but 
will funding that position help to build programs either in North Reading or even look into other collaborators that could keep the expense down? Yes, I mean, absolutely. That was a, that's what we talked a lot about last year during the budget um, development conversations, and that's certainly why it's a top priority uh, being presented in the recommended budget. We, we do feel um, with that position we'll better be able to you know, enhance and develop the programs that we, are, that we currently have in, in, in district and allow some of the administrators that are kind of are on staff to spend and allocate more time and resources to the development of those specialized programs. And over time, you know, the, the hope or the desire would be to, to be able to educate more students in district and that would ultimately you know, probably bring some of that cost down. I, I would just want to add to that that some of what we've experienced going into next year are needs that are just something that we cannot handle. And I don't, so I don't want to mislead into thinking that the elementary team chairperson would be a panacea and that it would capture every out of district placement. It wouldn't. Some, that we've had some cases that I think are pretty untypical Correct. going yeah, into next exactly. year that unfortunately have, have created an increase to the total allotment. But I think, well, I do think that if we were to have that position, we could reasonably offset certainly the cost of having the person in the position by some strategic programming that might bring a student either back to the district or prevent a student from going out of the district. I think that's the tricky thing with a position like this and with special ed in particular. There's no, there's no natural ROI measurement for there it. There's not. Because we, we've done a lot to keep students in house. We've got one fewer student that's going to be outplaced <laughs> next year, yet our costs are going up significantly. There's no way of of knowing that the type of services you're going to need to provide, so it's it's if we could put an ROI to it, it'd be excellent. I think the, I think it's an important position, but it's hard to kind of pin it down. Well, it, and it's coupled with the circuit breaker right. funding, A which because right. that's exactly what the circuit breaker is, yeah. is meant right, to, to do, help cover that is to help yeah. cover those yeah. those rare cases yeah. that are so much more expensive yeah. and to lose potentially 10% of the funding right. on that is, mm -hmm. is criminal. Although, to be honest, even yeah. the circuit breaker formula, which is what, t two times 40,000 or something? What it, what it, the threshold's up to 43,000, actually, uh, which is four times the average per pupil amount in the state. Um, so we're up to $43,000. Anything over So anything over $43,000 spent on any particular you know, well, we student. We have to front that money. We receive, right, we have to front all the money. You know, yeah. Anywhere between 65 and 75%. So if you have, you know, we're looking at, you know, if you have a seventy thousand dollar replacement, you do the difference, and you, you would receive. Yeah. So do you know what? Do you know what that difference is? Of like what? Dollar wise. We're paying and. So, um, the amount that we're bringing in on an annual basis is about five hundred seventy-five thousand dollars from the from, state. From the state, um, which means our total claim amount has generally been about nine hundred thousand dollars. So, you know, that's. Kind of, we're making 75% of that $900,000 number. And again, the $900,000 number is the amount that's over right. that 43, threshold. 43000 per student. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at an amount a lot higher than that. Yeah. yeah. I want to say it's, yeah, it's, it's in the, you know, in the two million, two, over $2 million range. Any other questions, Jerry? Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but you talked about Proposition 2.5. And, and that allows the town to collect 2.5% more in tax revenue than they did the year before, excluding new growth. Correct. But that tax revenue is only a percentage of the overall revenue picture, right? Correct. So what is it, what is it about 30, 70 percent of? The, 71 percent. 71 percent. Yeah. So basically, we're not getting two and a half percent of what our, the town's overall budget is. We're getting two and a half percent of 70 percent. Um, correct. Of, correct. Of the amount funded yeah, by the, right. the, the real estate tax revenue. Correct. And the other thing you have to point out, too, is that there are fixed costs that come right off the top before any allocation to the school department or to the town. The costs come off the top of the available revenue. For example, health insurance, which right now we're looking at a double digit increase again in health insurance premiums. And the other thing is there's a possibility there's going to be an increase in, in trash removal and retirement costs, again, mm -hmm. that, that uh, if not coming off the top or have to be funded from someplace. So the trash removal, yep. if that's an additional cost to the town, it's either coming from the town side of the budget or it's coming off the top. So these right. are things that, again, reduce the amount of uh, revenue that's available to it. Correct, yep. That's right. Julie, you have anything? I think what I have to say I can bring up during the workshop, because I think it's specific questions about some of the recommendations. Um, yeah, 
I can say that this is always my saddest day yeah. <laughs> to come to these meetings because it's so depressing. You know, it's, it's not, you know, even the recommended budget is not doing what we need to be doing as a school district, and it's very depressing. <laughs> I, I would, I'll probably keep most of my comments to the first workshop also, but I would say that even though it's not more important than any of these other positions, I feel the facilities engineer is a critical position. It would end up, sa end up saving us money on maintenance and uh, in the long run. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we need to find a way to, um, to fund that. Um, the other thing I'll say is in terms of you know, the future, three or four years down the road, a little longer, you know, the hope is we're gonna have some big revenue bumps with the Pulte project and also with sewer coming in and, and hopefully significantly adding to our commercial industrial base in town. But until that happens, the, the revenues are just going to keep creeping along at a, the, at a the slow rate. The is going to happen over an extended right. period of time, five, six, it's, seven. It'll be three million, but it'll be six years down the road. Um, but although they're advertising in the Boston Globe, uh, yeah, they're online <laughs> yeah, too. They they big online ad too. Yeah, at Martin's Landing. Yeah. The, the last thing I'll say is, is I mentioned this: the majority of our problem rests with the state, and it, it rests in the foundation budget, mm -hmm. and it rests in the fact that the state wildly underestimates what it costs yeah. a district to pay for health insurance and to pay for special education. So the state says, you should spend a dollar on health insurance and we're spending $9. Right. But they, re they, they base chapter 70 on that $1 amount, right. not the $9 amount. Really right. And it's the same thing with special ed. They, they, and, and until they fix that, and, and it's a $2 billion problem. Right. It's a $2 billion annual problem right now. I don't know how the state's going to find $2 billion. And this but health insurance thing is out of control. Last year, there was some extraordinary work done by the board of right. selectmen of the town administrator exactly. to, to reduce the cost down to, I think, a 2% or something in that, that range. Yeah. Again, now we're looking at a potential 10 or 11% increase this year. So. And you get jerked around, and every year you have to go talk to other, other health insurance and make sure the, pro, the plans are the same because you know, the employees come to depend on certain benefits and it's just, it's just a, it's a difficult situation. Um, okay. I think that's, I mean, Webster. yeah, the last thing I'll say just, and then I'll get to John. Um, I also think the high school teacher is critical. It's, to me, it's unacceptable. I think we do a great job at the high school, don't get me wrong, but it's unacceptable to have that many class, classrooms with 26, 27, 28, 30 students. Just, 30, 30, we shouldn't 40. have that. Mike, yeah. can you go back to that? Yeah, this one here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have four, you know, 15, uh, 13, not 22, 26, 27, 29 classes over, 20, over 27 students. And we really shouldn't have any over 25. So. And one teacher doesn't do it either. It'll help, though. It'll well, help in the core it's subjects, it's especially math and uh, science. John? Yeah, and I, well, to that, I wasn't going to mention that until just now when you brought the slide back up. But I, I think it's important to note, too, that the answer to that is not to not run courses. Right. Because all of our students take a minimum of eight classes. Some take nine, some take ten. Um, but the bulk of the students take eight. So they have to be somewhere. And when, when you have a, you know, a range of classes that exceed a number that's you know, more than desired, it doesn't, the offset isn't there. I mean, we have a pretty broad curriculum, but it's, it's in the core courses and it's in the elective areas, so it's, it's, it's everywhere because our students are taking um, you know, a pretty rigorous, rigorous schedule, which includes four years of English, math, science, and social studies, which is not the norm. But because we believe that that's philosophically where we should be, that, you, know, you, you create situations where the classes are what they are. But the other, the other points I wanted to make to Mrs. Kopke's comment about um, you know, this kind of being a depressing time for her when she has to look at you know where we are and I, I get that believe me when we when I sit around the table with the administrators of the district and we debate um, the positions that we are going to prioritize and by the way the slides you know they represent where we are on the requested 3.9 positions those are in priority order too by the way I think it's important to note that so the, 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 the school psychologist excuse me the school adjustment counselor at the high school is our number one um, requested position and then on so on down the line um, the administrative council and then the staff put a great deal of work into NRPS 2021 and we but we come to the realization in the winter every year that in order to balance what's reasonable and what the town's affordability is we kind of then make the decision all right we're going to tier these and that's what we've done again the request is really modest i mean the request I, I think it is 2021 is, is pretty modest yeah we, we we believe that it is and but we're trying to be 
understanding of the, the, the whole picture. And I, so we bring that to you, you know, with that, with that kind of a, you know, we wanted you to look at it through that lens. There's a lot more that we would like to be doing. The facilities engineer, I agree. But in the end, it's what are we going to do to preserve the classroom and, and, and create the best academic program. And then lastly, I just, I, I do want to, um, it, it was mentioned already, but I do think, you know, Michael puts an awful lot of time into um, the budget book every year. And while a lot of other people contribute to its development, he really does, as you all know, uh, take the lead on it. And I think, you know, the years that I've been the superintendent, and even when I worked with Michael when I was the high school principal, the, 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 the book has evolved into something that I think is really, you know, a comprehensive document that gives a good view into where the district is and where we want to be. So, Michael, thank you very much for but not only the preliminary budget but the presentation tonight. It really is good, Mike. I wish there were more oh, pictures, you, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, Jerry likes the pictures and yeah. the in charts. Yeah. yeah. I, I, and I would recommend that everyone who is interested, the budget book is available on the website. It is. Yeah. yeah. And I, I post dollars and ninety nine cents. Right. Yeah. That, we, maybe we should start charging access. <laughs> Just think, we'll get three people times seven ninety nine. Jerry, how many guzintas is that? That's um, almost uh, that's seven dollars and ninety seven. <laughs> Just one more, Julie. So, one thing that I do want to kind of bring up is that the NRPS twenty twenty one proposes the two academic foreign language teachers at the middle school, mm -hmm. and I mean that has been our goal as a school committee for the past few years yeah. and having just met with my fifth graders and their middle school um, administrators today in Danvers, you know, those sixth graders get a full year of, of foreign language. So our kids are not even starting until eighth grade. So that's a huge difference. That's two academic years of a foreign language. Mm -hmm. And I think that just opens up so many more possibilities at the high school level once you have that foundation in middle school. So I think that, you know, we should be cognizant of perhaps, you know, putting that forward. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll just throw out one word here for everybody to think about over the next few weeks and months. Plastics. Just for us to think about, not for the selectmen or override. Just, just think about it. That's all I'm saying. Well, I put that here also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's Julie, why I Julie it up. put it there. She's not running for our reelection. No, but <laughs> that's why I brought it up. I, I'm, not, I'm not recommending it. I'm saying think about it because um, and it, it might never go anywhere. But if, sometimes if you want to get things done, you've got to be aggressive. Is that one word or two words? It's one word. Anyway. All right. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Appreciate oh, it. Do you have anything? No, set. Okay. So our um, March 22nd is our workshop, correct? Correct. 3.30. Okay. We're not part of the webinar, are we? Are you? you can uh, call no, in. Welcome to, uh, <laughs> call in. Welcome to, yeah, we know you have voice, though. <laughs> we'll probably be saying that. Probably just typing out. in, right? Okay. A week or so. How to walk in. The webinar will be, and also the webinar on March 30th. Don't forget that. Mr. Schultz ran a little quicker. He would have been here for the whole presentation. <laughs> Clearly, our security is not very good. <laughs> uh, next, we have uh, everybody's favorite. This will be Jerry's, uh, Jerry and Julie's final participation in the school committee self-evaluation. And uh, I'm one member of the self-evaluation uh, of the evaluation subcommittee want to present this. I can't. I can't. Four to five. You take the seat. Julie. So you have the documents that Mr. Bernard has provided you, lots of information. You have our goals that we set back in August. You have um, kind of the timeline and um, the action plan, as well as numerous copies of um, the agenda. Oh, okay, and with our goals the on items it that, we've, okay. that address All right. um, well, la last our goals. The last meeting was good because it summarized all of them. Mr. Bernard, last the highlights. meeting, he uh, highlighted nice. which ones we've, we've met. Yeah, that's right. what he's We've addressed. Right. So. Yeah. This guy here. Yes. So you got, you have that from your last meeting's yeah. path. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you can see the agenda as far as the timeline goes. We are giving you the documents to complete, hoping to get them back by April 9th. Janine and I, as well as Mr. Bernard, will if we need to meet, we will meet as a subcommittee on April 11th to kind of compile the results. And then April 11th, we will present at a school committee. Um, 
just to, if we could meet either before the 11th or after. Um, I had sent it. Yes, you did. Oh, okay. You did. Yeah. You did send that. Yeah. Okay. Now, did we change? All the questions remain the same. All the all the categories. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Four is as high as you can go, right? That's what they said. Four. Four. I'm gonna put a ten. Four is as high as you can go. Can we, a, a serious question, can we type them? Is there a way to, rather than having a handwrite, is there like a Word document I can type in? I can we tried that. to do that before, but it, sometimes it worked, but then we had some issues one year. I, we or Jerry? No, 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 no. Jer Jerry's not going <laughs> to. I print very nice. I think I had, I compiled the results and put it into one document. Yes. Yeah. We had no issue typing into the doc. I, I'm happy to email it to all of you tomorrow. and then Like a digital copy right. and then, okay. yeah. yeah. All right. It should be a lot easier to I'll do that. Because you won't be able to read it, my writing. It might be Wednesday. Scott, while you're doing this, remember, it's your first year, so you don't want to rate too high your first year because then there's no place to go. I thought we were rating all of us. So no, you rate, rate no, very well. Just, oh, just myself? Well, you're rating all of us. Am I rating all of us? Or? You're also rating yourself, so you have to, you know, take that into account. Very that senior school committee. First though. year of learning. Wait, are, are we evaluating all of us? No, it's evaluating, essentially evaluating all of you. Yes, no, all of us. Individual. All of you. See? All of you, I said. <laughs> <laughs> in spite of you're not evaluating me, Scott. Everybody <laughs> else, you're evaluating. In spite of Scott, we'll probably do well. Right. You know. He's going to drag the, the right. he's going to drag the marks down. Okay. Any questions for Julie or Janine? It's, it's pretty straightforward. If you do have any questions, just contact one of them. Okay. Next, we have minutes. We have two executive sessions. Is that correct? You have two executive sessions, Mr. Chairman. Correct. One of them is from September 11th, 2017. Correct. And uh, I reviewed it and found no issues. So uh, at this time, I would entertain a motion to approve the September 11th, 2017 executive session minutes. So moved. Motion by Julie. Second. Second by Scott. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. And then we have a January 22nd executive session, which I was not present for. So. I will be abstaining, but I still need a motion for approval. Motion to approve. Motion by Julie. 2018 executive session minutes. Second. Second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And one abstention. Okay. Budget update. Michael, would you like to go through the budget again? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> um, staffing, nothing to report, Mr. Bernard? Nothing to report, Mr. Chairman. And we have bids and donations. You know what? Julie always reads it. Is, do you mind reading them? No, okay. All right. She's become the designated. She's become the designated. Donation. Not for long. <laughs> Bids and donations person. Go ahead, Julie. We'll have to bring in somebody. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $100 from Zul Marie Ro Roig and Richard Allen Wold to offset the costs associated with the eighth grade Washington, D.C. trip. Second. Motion by Julie, second by Janine. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Motion to approve that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of various supplies valued at $106.31 for Miss Senoretti's video production class at North Reading Middle School. And who is that from? Does it? Tina Senoretti. No, it's from the, it's oh, from the, oh, Friends of Actions. Actions. Yes. It wasn't in the, you no, I didn't know, I didn't see it. Okay. Back to all of the rest. So that's from Friends and Hornets Productions. Motion by Julie, second by Janine. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation from the Friends of Hornet Productions, a participation fee for 10 students valued at $200 to attend the MMEA Junior Districts from North Reading Middle School. Second. Motion by Julie, second by Janine. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. One discussion, though. Is it an item or is it a is it dollars I think it's it was the for fee ten the participation fee was it just like a waiver no no no, no they, they covered they, the fee they paid the fee yeah to yeah participate. I just didn't know if it was like dollars or something else okay it's Bitcoin I think Bitcoin yeah next I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of sewing machines a sewing table and miscellaneous sewing supplies valued at $235 from Friends of Hornet Productions to produce pop costumes no. for student plays at North Reading Middle School. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of a portable PA system to enhance student performances 
valued at $999.99 from Friends of Horner Productions to enhance student performances at North Reading Middle School. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, unanimous. Thanks everybody again, especially Friends of Hornet Productions for your many donations tonight and over the last few years. Okay, we have a subcommittee update. The athletic subcommittee met. We did meet, didn't we? We met. Yes. Oh, we had a, we actually had a, uh, we discussed briefly the um, co-op co co uh, and the fee for co-op teams, but we didn't go into depth because we had just met the night before. Correct. Um, but we did inform the uh, athletic subcommittee of the p potential changes in that and explain to them that our policy subcommittee would be reviewing that policy and coming back yeah, to. I think we told them it was a consensus that right. we wanted to go with the straight, straight fee. And I again gave Julian um, Scott credit. Mr. Chairman. I'm done doing that. Yes. I, I, so I have um, notes from that athletic subcommittee meeting for the policy subcommittee okay. meeting on Friday morning. Okay. Excellent. So I plan to bring I plan to bring it up with uh, Ms. Imbriano and Mr. Buckley Friday. Mr. Conley gave us an update on the budget. Um, Is this has the subcommittee been meeting too? Do, will they update at the budget workshop? What sub? Athletic sub facilities. Committee? No, the subcommittee that's been working on the budget and talking, trying to get no, more. Detail. No, we're gonna we're gonna meet after this presentation right. tonight we we're had it as a up. tba on the last meeting. yeah okay um we also talked about the uh the budget we're not going to have as much to carry over this year to next year as, as we did from last year to this year but there still will be a small carryover correct michael well it's 7700 i think but we we had the po possibility of recouping about the chance right yeah we expect it to be recouped you know so we think we'll get we'll yeah get back up closer to like fifteen thousand. yeah to right. seventeen thousand. Well, you know. About 17,000, right. And also, Mike gave us a nice breakdown, as he does for everything else, but we had the numbers in for the spring season for the uh, number of athletes in each sport and the amount they paid in user fees. And it looks like the total user fee collection for the year was $282,000, and that's for every sport, every every person that paid, paid a user fee. And then the, the estimate on the gates it goes down like 10,000 or something this year? Because we don't have the Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving game. game. Thanksgiving game. Oh, yeah. it's all from just one every other year. Lot every other year, yeah. Yeah. But our gate revenues for last year were thirty thousand. Yeah, they were good. Twenty-three dollars. We also um, discussed the new baseball, softball batting cages. That project is well with the weather; it's going to be put on hold <laughs> anyway. On hold. <laughs> the project's been on hold because there were some issues with the site and gas pipes. Although and, there was a very productive meeting this morning. Oh, good. So I think we have the green light. We're anticipating a building permit to be issued by the end of this week. And does National Grid have to come over, or does that all have to they happen? They have been involved on what the recommendation is for us to deal with the existing line so that we don't compromise it. Okay. That's, a, that's good that the subcommittee is in existence because we hashed that out at the subcommittee meeting that right. there was some issues yeah. with gas pipes and water yep. pipes. Right. That actually, that was yeah. good to have that subcommittee meeting yeah. and to be able to discuss because that. Marty is invaluable. Right. Marty that. Tilton was, the right. Recreation department. Yeah. And then we, of course, we discussed the uh, restroom uh, concessions stand, which we talked about earlier. Um, that'll be coming next week now. You know, it's too bad it's a week late, but can't stop the well the snow. spring sports are going to be delayed now anyway outside. right i know have to be inside it looked like for a while we were right have a nice clear yeah. field it's a great february yeah <laughs> but they're not going to be getting out getting outside too soon no. i've never no. understood these poor kids who play softball and baseball they just you know the, the lacrosse can get out in the field a little sooner because the the turf if it melts they but can the, practice indoors though yeah they do yeah it's tough was that that was about it wasn't it yeah and I think that was the only uh, subcommittee that's met in the last two weeks. It is. Um, administrative report, Mr. Bernard. Yes, so two things, Mr. Chairman. The first is um, you may recall that one of the goals I had set out in my educator plan was about <clears throat> um, bringing some social emotional learning initiatives to the district. So um, I have participated in um, a workshop that was hosted in Tewksbury and found it to be, along with Dr. Daly and Mrs. Cohn, and, and found it to be very, very good. And so I'm looking to replicate that in North Reading for um, the next school year. So what I attached to, um, to the, to the um, report is a copy of an application that has gone out with some information about a retreat for social emotional learning that I'm opening up to 15 um, teachers to work with the Administrative Council. Excellent. Um, so it's going to be facilitated by Dr. Bill Rebus, who is the author of the book that you see in the graphic there, Social Emotional Learning in the Classroom. 
as you all know, social emotional learning is you know a pretty hot topic in education right now, and so we're doing some good work. But I think this is one more place where we can. Um, and I, I've received some applications from teachers already to participate. But I think it's another area where we can kind of expand our learning base by inviting teachers to participate um, across the district at all grade levels. And it's been said already by a couple of folks, um, both Lizzie Barrett and, and some of the school committee members, about um, maskers and the one man, two governors play. It just, you know, that one act was, was outstanding. It really was. And um, you know, it's just, I think, another example of how, you know, we have some, some really good things going on here with students. And uh, I'm excited for them to, to advance to the state competition on March 23rd. So um, congratulations to, to all of the students, their advisor, Mrs. Kane, uh, cast, and, and crew, because, you know, I think sometimes those. Those students that work behind the curtain, you know, don't always get the recognition that they that they deserve. But this this participation in the in the um, in the festival does do that. And some of our students, Maggie O'Donnell, for example, um, is just one. But she, as the stage manager, was was properly acknowledged for her work. Well, pilot competition is setting up the it's right. the, the timing and the exactly. So yeah. it really was nice to see. Um, but they got called out specifically for their work, you know, so-called back, backstage. One of the and also one thing. Um, a lot of alumni came back right. to did. help. Yeah, because they're on kind spring of break. Coordinated yeah. well with their Correct. spring break. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, that was yeah. that was much appreciated. Out of their well. alumni game. Yeah. I um, yeah. I I I was looking at some old pictures um, last night of the school project, and there was a couple of me and uh, of me and Jerry in the uh, forming arts center when Jerry used to say there aren't going to be enough seats, <laughs> and you know you, you just kind of see the outline of it. And it, but it just, it, it makes me so happy that we can host these Absolutely. kinds of things. I mean, things we could never dream of doing. Nope. And just to see all the different high schools, and you know, they walk in and they say, you know, sure, some of them, you know, Marblehead is a really nice high school, but they, they come in here and they say, wow, this is, this is really nice. This my, is a great they facility. They love to come here. My, my eye doctor, actually, my, my, learned that I went to North, I, my kids go to North Reading, and she, her, her student, for some reason, went to one of the shows because her friend was there, and she was going on and on about how much nicer our performing arts center is yeah. than theirs right now. The other thing we take so. for granted is Main Street, though, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, when you have a show like that, you right. have three people, are gathered. Right. people outside. So much. You couldn't do that before. Now there's room, and they can set up booths and they had, concessions. They had concessions. They had, uh, they were selling T-shirts. They had pictures. Right. Donuts. They had the best right. fucking donuts. They had uh, the, yeah. the Donna's Donuts from Tewksbury, <laughs> which I saw that won the, program, the Globe's yeah. Best Donuts. But it's just, it's like a nice festive atmosphere because of Main Street, really. Right. And it just, it was, uh, it was great. Some artwork on display. Yeah, you know, it allows us to do a lot more. Yeah, right. I have one question. Yeah, and then we have uh, future business. Oh. One, one, just one more thing. I just wanted to ask, Parent University. Yes. I don't know how. I, I, I'm just going to say, like, it looks really nice. Yep. Like, I actually looked through the programs, and Thank you. if I'm not working that day, it does look really nice. A lot of offerings, and I like that it also isn't just for the high school like I saw the classing and yes like what the recommended ages are and so I don't I mean I know it's still a long way away but is there are we receiving a lot of good feedback a lot yes. of people as, registering as, or? Of, as of this morning they were 41 okay. and I think uh, which I thought was good and it was well represented cool. I think the bachelor school had the most signups okay. I, had, I had a breakdown dr. Daly did a breakdown for me on each school um, enrollment and so if you look at the workshops and then in, if you can envision them being offered in each of the three sessions, I think there are a total of 36, and all but one of them had at least one person registered. There was only one with a zero. Now, it's offered two other times, sure. and there was interest. Yeah. But uh, So it's coming. I, I think I sent out a reminder email over the weekend. Yeah, I was, I I was impressed so with I'll that. I'll continue to do that. Yeah. You know, it's it's, a, I, good, it's yeah. a good agenda. It's a good yeah. day of uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, Truth be told, my goal was to have 50 or more people. Yeah. So I think well, you know, still a lot of first time. year out. I haven't registered yet. I probably will. Yeah, good, I'll see if good. I'm working. And, and some people aren't going to be able to come for all. Yeah, that's right. You know, but there's one of interest to them. They'll come for that. I think it's the first great, day of youth know? soccer, which, so I don't think my wife can come. Oh, is it? Yeah. I think so, but I'll at least drop my other kids, and even if I skip the classes, you know, come back at 12:30 and pick them up. Yeah, there is daycare, childcare. So, so. okay, we have uh, future business. We have policy subcommittee on. March 16th, which I believe is Friday. Finance plan team on March 20th. NORCAM, March 22nd. Athletic subcommittee, March 27th. Evaluation subcommittee, April 11th. And then uh, the budget subcommittee will be scheduling um, a budget. 
And then also uh, school committee meetings, March 22nd, 3.30 is our budget workshop, which is open to the public. It'll be in the superintendent's conference room. March 26th, we will be meet, our regular meeting will be at the Hood School. And then April 9th, our regular meeting will be here, and that'll be our public budget hearing. So um, I'm looking for a, a, a huge crowd, as we uh, normally get at our budget hearings. 13 or 14 maybe um, write down the names of people I do I do have to say I, I've watched a few other school committee meetings from because I have no life from other towns <laughs> on cable people go to those meetings I, I, I don't understand is it because we're so good yes yes when you're doing this good a job there's very little um, okay yeah. I just wanted to check <laughs> anybody have anything hey, else anyone anyone objects for you <laughs> you know where my self evaluation is going right <laughs> anyone have anything else okay With that I'll take a motion to adjourn so moved. So moved. No, second. Janine beat him out. Janine, oh, motion by Janine, second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Good night. <laughs>